don't know if we have, this doesn't really have a uh, presentation or a PowerPoint with KW. So this is kind of really my opinion. I think something good to know. And everybody has a different opinion on some negotiating tactics. So if anybody has anything they want to add, feel free, please. And uh, if I click this, we'll go to, is there a slide or something? Let's see, we'll just keep me on track. Negotiating price. All right, price. Price negotiating. You can negotiate price actually on two different things, right? You can do it on a listing, which is something I think we all got to get used to. Um, if you're on the belief that the prices may come down in the near future, which I think they already are. If you're keeping a close eye on the MLS, you'll notice that we've had more price reductions in the last 60 days, 90 days than we've had, I think, in the probably the last 12 months. Um, real quick, our prices, depending on what part of Atlantic County, are up anywhere from 25 to 40 percent. So uh, there is nothing in this county that justifies a 25 to 40 percent increase in price. The only way you can increase in price is if you have uh, less inventory, which we did, but it was, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was, it wasn't real. We just took all the bank loans off the market, stopped evicting people and then just the people were let go in their house due to COVID ner being nervous. Right. So if you know that inventory is coming back, which I'm sure Noel will tell you that bank loans are coming back because he does a lot of taxing foreclosures. Um, those are coming back. Normal foreclosures are being foreclosed on at the, at the sheriff's sale. Even occupied properties are being foreclosed on. And both of my two out of the, my three evictions that I filed in mid 2020 got heard yesterday at the courthouse in Lake City. Both of them I've sold now, so it didn't really matter. But my point is they're they're pushing through the evictions for tenants as well. So all this is going to bring more inventory. More inventory will bring uh, prices down because we have not had thousands of jobs added in Atlanta County, right? Unless I missed something, no. And we haven't had huge increases in hourly wages unless I missed something, which is the two things you need to increase prices. So when you're pricing a house for sale, anybody have any, any good ideas on how to get somebody to price a house right? Any good uh, listing presentations I mean, out there? CMA, yeah, CMA, right? Consumer market analysis. If they say, oh no, because it's the seller's market. Right. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Driving me nuts. Yeah. Well, I, listen, if things are still selling and that, that criteria, that house and the price they say is good, good. List it. Um, however, if they want to push the envelope even now, which I'm seeming like the list, average list prices in the MLS are actually going up right. and the average sales prices are kind of flat. Yet I'm seeing a lot of price reductions. So, you know, you can do two CMAs. You can do a CMA now and do a CMA from like two years ago before your market went up. You don't have the price down from there. Right. But you look, you're looking at two different markets right now. You so can give. You're, you're looking, you're almost looking right now at uh, GameStop. At GameStop? Yeah. yeah. So you can actually, when you talk to people, you say, if you're in a GameStop situation, most people know what it is. And they skyrocket up in value, and all of a sudden it took a beating right away. Right. So you're right at the cusp of that market. Yeah. Already. It's a story that is very, it's still small, but the take up the contract for a big plan pass is literally how many the market it was in a year. You said that there in the text. What, what, how many? How many? There was 28 active. Active. And like, I mean, I've been, I've been last year, how many was there? Four. Four, six. right. Is time. that under what price or any price? Any. We're Any price. Built in right. So the, the common that common uh, house. Right. And they have a township that they were right, they were averaging four, six at a time. And everyone was beating their doors down to get that. They house. were. But now you're starting to see demand the drove the prices. The There's a lot more in the market. That same demand to buy that one, get that one doesn't exist. So if they quadrupled, and then you consider the fact in 2019, there was over a hundred. 128 was the average was the average for, for sale the in eht all the time so you went from 128 down to four or six at a time right. and now you're at 28 30 so you see it's going up but not there yet it's almost like like what he's saying is almost like i can tell you that the prices are going down but i have no data to actually show you that it actually has not they're, not they're going to too. go down we just haven't seen the data yet is what it is yeah. and then what happens is just when you go up in price you go up in price because you know you pay 250 and then he pays he's you sell for 250 and then he's lists for 270 gets 260 she lists for 290 and gets 280 before you know it somebody's at 300 000, and that's the new market when the prices go down it works exact same way 
who's who's who needs to get out the fastest and they list for 250 or it's like 300 the next one's 290 and 280 70 the problem with that is i think the price is over inflated probably by 20 percent minimum and that ball will roll very fast so my price my, my my listing presentation from 2008 say seven till 2000 really 18 17 18 was uh my listing presentation is basically a little bit about me and then the stats for you know um terry datum we use at the office meetings you guys all have access to that if you want to use it you can use it we, we do them every month we'll email them to you but you use the the, the stats that uh, best serve your goal you know, so if your goal is the price is right then show them what you need to see the price is right um but that's really i'll go with the numbers i see you have any questions about me no what's asking and so forth and i go from there and we used to take a piece of paper and if i can get a pen you got a pen i can borrow let me see this is my this is my listening presentation well i, I did the, the stats but we'd say that this is a this is a ball and it's rolling down the hill and kind of like this is this is 250 this is 230 this is 220 this is 210 this is 200 the only way to only way to stop a ball rolling down the hill fast is to get in front of it so if you look at the shift book it says price ahead of the market so if the market says today is 250 i would tell people price of people and also down the motivation so if somebody says you have my, my motivation to sell scale one to ten is is a five in a in a downward market I'll tell you, they're probably going to chase the ball all the way down the hill. Um, so really, everything of the negotiating price with a, with a seller, it comes down to motivation. If they're a 10, then they'll probably listen to what you have to say, but you'll have to consistently be in front of the ball. And until you get there, you'll just chase it right down. So if they're a one. On motivation? Yeah. I mean, it's up to you if you want to take the listing. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's probably what. <laughs> now, see, your, your other thing about going low is, the, right now, our market is still, you still can list it right and list it low. You have a good chance of going 110 of exactly. your mm -hmm. price. Yeah. Yes. And you have that appraisal value. So it's more or less saying to a seller, well, we can list it high, but you may get only a few people seeing it. You might get an offer, you probably won't get an offer. Mm -hmm. But if you listen down here, you will get a lot of showings, you'll get a lot of offers, and you'll probably sell it up there right away. I agree. You're but still there. High, the market's still there. Right. Especially in the lower end, I'd say like under 350 on the mainland, right. I, I still see multiple offers, but you're right. But the problem is the typical sellers, especially the ones that are trying to seize this market, they're trying to push the envelope on a market that they've already pushed the envelope over the edge. You know what I mean? And that's why the average list prices have gone up, but the, the average sales prices, I think are staying flat. Um, we'll see that seeing. staying at flat, right? Yeah. I, I didn't look at the stats for, uh, the end of the month that's for september yet um yeah so hey, listen buying and selling when they're making an offer or they're listing a house everything comes down to motivation if you're not you know a seven or higher on their motivation to list then they're not going to price right most likely because it's all comes down to motivation you can't motivate somebody that's not motivated so i have a question yeah where like my our biggest our biggest issue is Exactly. Yeah. That's been my that's been our hardest piece to overcome. Mm -hmm. Is where are they going to go? That's great. That's a good objection. Because the down we could talk about the it. The downsizers can't downsize if they're the same price for them. Right. And well. They, yeah. And then there's no there's not many. Well, the rentals are finally picking up, but it's more available. It's more available. That has been the biggest problem is finding a rental. To me, if they're making like a good amount extra money because the market's up and they can spend twenty percent of that extra profit on renting, then it's probably worth it to rent for a year and wait to buy. And I think based on the way the court's moving, I think a year maybe might do it to make at least get somewhat of a better deal. I mean, if somebody's gonna sell and make a great amount of money and then they have to buy now, as long as they get a really low interest rate, which they can, and they're not gonna move in the very near future. I mean, you know, seven to 10 years, uh, they, they'd be okay maybe. But uh, we've been telling people, I mean, I don't know if you still work now with the way the market's going, but the, the objection handler we were using is, let me list it, let me list it. If I can get this price for you, you can make X amount of dollars, you'd be happy, right? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can negotiate a six-month lease back from the, from the owner or three months, you know what I mean, from the buyer. 
and a lot of a lot of owners oh, i'm sorry a lot of buyers were, were allowing it um renting like we were saying if you make a good amount of money renting letting us negotiate renting back was another one of the uh, option we used we were um some people were moving out of the area i mean the motivation that you know on the on the uh shift the shift act it says find the motivated right so to me if you have if you don't want to sell them a house because they're selling and then buying high and you think you don't want to sell them to have a house find the motivated and that motivated could be people that are moving out of town for jobs and because of covid we had a lot of i call it the covid migration i mean a lot of people moved from you know North Jersey to South Jersey, New York to Jersey, Washington to South Jersey. So, um, and but our South Jersey people that had local worked off the local economy, they got priced out of the market. They left. A lot of people left. Um, they made their money here and then went to places like South Carolina and Florida, places that they could get a cheap house. So their their dollar went a lot farther, and the taxes were cheaper. Where in North Jersey thought our taxes were cheap and our prices were a joke, right? So. Um, find the motivated that could include people that are moving or people that are downsizing to the point they only need a rental for a year um got to figure it that is a good objection that's the most common objection we had in the last 18 months however we had a, you know record numbers of sales and sales prices people had an uh, you know they were going somewhere you know what i mean so don't don't let it keep you from thinking we can you can list or sell their house because if you don't, somebody will, and there's an option out there. Hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. All right. So when you're negotiating for the list price to come down, motivation. So you, their motivation is good. There are nine, there are eight, there are nine, or are ten. But they don't want to list it at the price you want to list it at. What do you do? That 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 comes down to just motivate. That comes down to scripts and reminding them of their motivation, right? So you say like. Um, well, I usually yeah. list something I mean, as long as they agree to a price and maybe it's a little higher, I mm -hmm. think that's fine. But if they're not getting any showings or feedback is you know not right. great, then at least in two or three weeks, it's time to reduce. Right. Gotcha. Um, or higher dollar places where we're just like you had. <laughs> just right. to get the feedback to let them see it and show, hey, nobody thinks it's worth this. Let's, you know. Because the price. Right. Brokers opens it with get opinions from you know eight, 10 brokers. That's or another agents. That's right. a great way to it's a great way to offset the blame on somebody else and exactly. you know get a group opinion. No, it's good. It it's good. Opinion, so. People make people make decisions based on emotions, right? You exactly. know that, right? Uh, There's actually a circle, a chain of life, I call it, but um, I don't know all the parts of it. But if you can get to that emotional part, you usually say, you know, create the thought. The idea from the thought than the emotion. So if they don't want to reduce the price after no showings, it's been in the market two, two to four weeks. Um, you got to always just continually go back to the motivation. You know, it's like, you know, Holly, you said you wanted to get to Florida by December, right? So yes, yes. Right. Right. That's right. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, so well. I say, say yes. Yeah. I think that, um, what, why were you going to Florida? You know what I mean? And then, I don't know, give me a reason why you're going to Florida. I don't like Florida. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say you're going to Florida because you want to get closer to your kids, get a the job. Huh? I don't pay any state income tax. There you go. That's perfect. I don't, I don't get a coach. What's important to that? What's important to you about that? What, what's important to you about no no COVID shots or uh, uh, no, no state income tax? I want my freedom. Awesome. <laughs> and is that important to you? It is. How does that make you feel, Noel? It makes you feel like I went to that. Awesome. So we're ready to reduce the price so you get out of Jersey? Absolutely. Every day you don't sell your house, you're buying it back from yourself. So you can get to Florida by December, have no COVID shots, have no income taxes. Is that awesome? That's awesome. awesome. All right. Sign here. Press hard. <laughs> Sometimes I actually get an A. But always go back to the movie. Right when I take the price, I should bring a change form with me. And I yes. say, we'll two to your price. After that, we're coming to my price, $20,000. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we did that as well. Get a, I used to get a blank one signed. Yeah. Whether they want to sign it or not, is having, I say, listen, this will be to reduce the price or, or, or withdraw the property when you don't, don't want to reduce it. Um, because it's seriously, I cannot stress how much you need to learn how to take price reductions because this was the, this was the, our whole, listing houses was easy in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 
selling houses was hard because you had to have a lot of tough conversations at dining room tables or kitchen tables telling people how their house was not worth what they paid for it. You're probably going to lose all the money you put down or we're going to do a short sale or you're going to go into foreclosure. It was just a sad time. Um, so you got to get used to having those conversations and you have to get used to getting to the motivation because if you don't, you won't get the reduction. If you don't get the reduction, you won't sell the house. It was literally, you'll, you might get, to, you literally might get to the point where you, if you do enough listings at overpriced, you won't take them. You'll just say, I'm not taking them. Because an overpriced listing, normally the sellers will repeatedly call you asking why it hasn't sold. Even they had a half hour conversation about how it's not going to sell at that price. So please get used to these conversations. Get a change form signed up front, whether it's blank, whether you have the conversation or not. This way it's ready to go. Cool. And somebody motivation, 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 motivation. You somebody say you're going to take that listing and you're the phone call during that. When it's all done, like, are you ready to listen to the right price? Yeah, seriously. You say get a change form? Sorry. Yeah, there's an MLS change form. And just, you should include it in your listing packet. So everything the seller signs, just have them sign a blank one. And you can tell them it's to either reduce the price or really change anything on the MLS or withdraw the property. Also, I did discover for anybody that works in the added area listings, each MLS is different. So make sure that MLS doesn't use, some don't always use our MLS, our, right. our listing form. No, I know. Our change I form, brother. Oh, yeah, they all have different, I mean, different forms. Sex are all completely different listing forms. Oh, yeah, they're all, yeah. Yeah, unless it's really our, board, that's our board forms. Right. Um, like Bright doesn't even, they don't even need a form. Um, I mean, you should still no, you, get a form. You, you, you need a form, but they don't. They, you don't send it to them. No. Gotcha. All right. So you could for yeah. Bright, you could use our form. You just keep a copy and file on your own file. Right. Um, Bright, you don't have to send anything to them, uh, or unless you do. Okay. Cool. So negotiating price that was on listings, and and really, I'm going to go over motivation over and over again because whether you're buying or selling, it always comes back to motivation, right? Cool. So negotiating price on a buyer side. Anybody negotiated a, a deal recently? Oh yeah. How, how'd you do? Um, this one you just put under contract for two something, right? Three. Three, so even three, better. But I think it was two seventy nine nine. So we went in at three. Good as wow. is, even though it wasn't as is. Uh huh. And do the um, home inspection during the attorney review. Wow. Um, just that was the only way I went. Wow. So you went over 20,000, 21,000 over asking price as is on the home inspection during attorney review. Right. And wow. That's awesome. And did they have multiple offers or you just oh, assumed yeah, they, they did? They, they did it. They told you that. Yeah. And that was your highest and best. Or was that your initial offer? That was the highest and best. That was your highest and best. That's they awesome. started at the regular. Gotcha. And then I had another one that was the exact same and I tried the exact same thing and they just lost it. So how, wh why was your buyer buying? Um, they need to move out of the apartment that's um, infested with mold. Mm. How long have they been looking? Um, actually, I met them at the open house. They went under contract oh, cool. with my nephews, which was a disgusting thing. So they were um, buying another one that they canceled. Right. Gotcha. They, they already got out of that one, and now we're under contract. Must have been like two weeks? Hmm? Like, yeah, it has been. Oh, wow. Good yeah. for you. They, mm -hmm. they put an offer there. He accepted. They did a home inspection. It was horrible. Uh, were they up and went to the first house and they loved it so. were they looking within somebody else no you're the first, the first agent time. gotcha so they haven't been looking they have not been out looking they just right. they were they were and i mean i was say well what why why were they moving out of the house again um they're they, in a rental that has mold gotcha and they're not taking care of it and they don't they have kids and they have allergies and asthma and a little one that's a year mm -hmm. old and they don't they don't want to live there live there anymore they don't live, they moved out already. They so already they, moved out. would you say their motivation was a, a 10? Uh, I would say a 10. Yeah, right? I'd say 11. Yeah. That's pretty quick. <laughs> right? that, yeah. that, that, that's motivation. I yeah. mean, uh, that's total so you see, like, you know, now if they were just, uh, I don't know, think of somebody that, you know, they just, they have enough room in their apartment. Their lease is not up till July of 2022. There's no mold. Um, they don't need a bigger place yet, but they want to buy. They're your kind of, to me, to me I call them the discretionary buyers. They want to buy, but they don't need to buy. They can't really buy because they're in at least till July, right? So you have to have the conversations when you ask when these motivation conversations and the initial buyer's consultation, which you should definitely do, especially now it's a little hard when things are moving that quickly and you have 10 offers. But when the market does start to turn, you should sit down with people, get them pre-qualified while they're in the conference room, get all the information, what their wants, their needs are. Um, and this way you can 
get to that motivation conversation because if they're not, you know, they're not motivated and you don't discover that their lease is not up for almost a year, you'll be running around showing houses and then they find out, they realize that they come to the realization that they can't make an offer, or can't move out until July, can't get out of their lease. So now you're waiting anyway to make offers and go look again, right. understand? So it's really to save you time, them time. Get it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so they, let me ask this. How, how did you get them to come up over asking price as is during the term review? Explain to them what the market's like. Right. Um, and it is, and you know, yeah. this is the way the market is. I can't tell you how many people have been taken out and they lost. Half of them have given up and decided to rent instead. Yes. Uh, especially FHA, but they weren't FHA. Actually, mm -hmm. I had the other fire I'm closing on. He was FHA. And that was a nightmare because we were losing every single one. And I right. we went back and looked in the township who was winning these offers. Mm -hmm. We were losing, and it was because everybody else was conventional. Mm -hmm. How many conversations did you have with them to get them over that 21,000 over asking? Um, one. Yeah. No, what was the last buyer you worked with? You don't work with a lot of buyers, I know. I was thinking the last buyer, I was like trying to think, um, most of mine are investors. Yeah. A lot of my investors have been forced to make higher offers over asking, you know, high offers that they wouldn't normally make. And bringing their profit margins down to numbers they really wouldn't do. Only, yeah. So I, I've been telling people sell, sell. But the ones that do, they say they want to keep guys busy, or they just want a project to do. They can't leave their, you know, if they don't use their guys, their construction guys, they'll lose them all. Um, so I'm trying to think of a conversation that it's all down to motivation. It's all it is. You had a very motivated buyer exactly. for very, very good reasons. Um, but there's a, you have to have a list of questions to get to that motivation. And I go, before you got in, I was having a conversation with, with Holly, kind of a role play is you figure out whether they're buying or selling, what that motivation is. Because it has to get to boil down to the feelings of what they're feeling, why they were feeling in harm's way, their child was in harm's way, right? right. They're unsafe in their house, right? Unhealthy, an unhealthy house. So that's, a, that's an easy, you know, emotion. <clears throat> To, to remind them of. I don't even think you got to remind them of it. They're, they move quickly. Um, but if, you know, let's say somebody wants to, they're, they're renting for years. I remember when I was renting myself, I wanted to buy a house and I wasn't, I, was, I said, I'm not renting another house in my life. I don't care what I got to do. If I got to go rob a bank, I'm buying a house. Um, and I got denied six times for a mortgage. <laughs> I'm like Jerry Konefsky, still in mortgages. Met me at 8:30 p.m. on friggin' New Road to give me a mortgage at like 8.9 percent, which it was like two percent over. I didn't care. I was like, whatever. I'm buying a $59,000 townhouse. I don't really care. Um, but eventually, if they're if somebody's motivated and they got that feeling that they definitely want to buy for one reason or another or have to buy, they will do what they need to do. But if you realize, real estate, they were what 16, 17, 18, 20. God, how, how long were you? When did you get in real estate? Uh, 87. Oh, wow. I didn't know you've been in real estate that long. Yeah. How old are you, no? <laughs> you don't look that old, man. Yeah, because that definitely means only one. Next year, I'm buying, I'm, I'm buying my adult community. <laughs> you definitely, right? Wait, wait, you're wait, buying wait. the 55 and older community, you said? Next year. Um, did somebody say something? No. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. How about crazy. anybody in my audience here? Kendrick, you've been doing a lot of deals, man. You've been crushing it. Working with any buyers that you've had uh, any uh, tough uh, tough conversations to get them up on price on these uh, over asking offers? Um, that's right. He's probably, he's no, probably I think our calendar. Oh, are we? No. Oh. Let's reverse me. Right, so they couldn't hear me? Steph, can you say something? Can you hear me now? I think he just got logged on. Hear me now. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's all right. I was just seeing if anybody in our Zoom audience had any good uh, negotiating recently with buyers that were tough conversations or, you know, uh, how to get, how you got them up on price. Or... Hey, Sean, it's Michelle Bucknum. How are hey, you? Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. I had one. Good. I got a story. I had, I had these first time home buyers, four months they were looking in Brigantine. Um, Bettner, Margie, everywhere down the shore, they're, they're qualified for 350. Um, and no, I'm sorry, qualified for 400. 
Wow. So they good. refused. Yeah, they said, I refuse to pay over asking. You know, they had their list, everything they want. I explained the market up and down. They tried throwing in these 20,000 under asking. And I had to, every mm. time he, the husband tried to do that, I had to have that talk with him and say, listen, this is not that kind of market. You know, right. these are what these prices are listed at and what they're going for. And this was back, you know, over the summer when, or right before the summer when things were really crazy. So they ended up super random in Hamilton paying uh, 10,000 over for property because they got to that point where after four months, they, they said they gave up on the shore. It just, they weren't getting what they wanted in their price range. Um, but I had to have a serious talk with them and say, you know, like what you're looking for in these towns, first, you're not going to find it. And second, you can't think you're going to lowball everything. And they eventually, <laughs> eventually, you know, understood and, you know, we put in a full price offer, went to highest and best, and then ended up just going 10 over and getting the, getting the bid. That's awesome. So, you so I know how you, four months, why were they buying? So they just got married. They were renting a condo where the husband was living. It was a one or two bedroom. So it just wasn't fitting their needs. And I think what really got them was they, um, they got a dog that they were waiting for and the condo landlord would not allow the dog. So once that dog was coming, you know, they knew that dog was ready to be, you know, dropped off to them. Their motivation really went up even more. Oh, after they got the dog, did they get the offer? Well, they actually, they got the dog. The dog was living with the, par the, the husband's parents for about a month. And then right. they finally, you know, decided to just kind of jump on, on something and listen to my advice. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Michelle, I can help on that one too, didn't I? No, yeah, no, help me with that one with negotiating oh, cool. and appraisal awesome. gap and all that. Yeah. So Thank you, know. <laughs> you think their motivation definitely went up when they got the, the dog making, I, they couldn't, the dog couldn't live with them, right? Yeah, I do. And I think at that point, the wife was just ready to get out of that condo in general, too. So, right. and like, they just didn't fit where they were because she had moved into his condo. So, I think it was just all of the combination of all of that coming together. And after four oh, yeah. months, you know, just kind of like, and then they, they seem happy with their house. They don't feel when, like they uh, paid over. It appraised. So when was it Lisa? Do you on. know? They didn't have a, they had a month a month. So they, gotcha. they weren't in a rush lease wise. It was just gotcha. more. Yeah. The other circumstances. Did they use those words. I'm not in a rush. No, not per se, but they wanted, they knew, they thought they knew the market and they thought it was a bad market. And um, they, kind of expressed that they were okay taking their time. But I think, right. you know, as we, they put in these lower offers and realized they just weren't even getting considered, um, they, it, it took them a couple news in order for them to really understand what was going on. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it sounds like, like their motive. Did you have a conversation about their motivation of why they wanted to buy in the beginning? I did. Yeah. Did. Because yeah, we, um, I spoke to them for a, you know, before they really started getting out there, I spoke to them about their motivation, made sure they were pre-qualified, wouldn't put them, bring them in a house until they had a pre-qual letter. Um, so, you know, we had a lot of open communication. She was uh, someone I knew from high school. So, you know, we knew, I knew her already. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, I think they were just a little shocked at first with the market, even like I'm kind of underestimating everything I kind of told them in the beginning thinking that they can outsmart the market by, you know, throwing in these low ball offers. And, and it was just kind of a trial and error. Like, it, I think that they had to get burned a little bit just to kind of really grasp it. Sometimes, sometimes they do. And, uh, you know, sellers the same way. If they, they're very, they tell you, I'm motivated. I have to sell in 90 days. And then two months goes by and they have hardly any showings and no offers. You know, they have to see it for themselves sometimes, but I'm going to, I'll ask Holly and you the same question. So when, you were put submitting the offer before you submitted the offer to the other agent. Um, did you call the agent? And what if you did, what would you, would you say, would you ask the agent? Um, do, okay. So yeah, Michelle, why are you you're already talking? Um, so yeah, I called the agent. I asked him if there were any offers out there. Um, I asked, you know, if the seller was motivated, it turned out that they were getting, the sellers were getting divorced. So there was big motivation there. Right. Um, so we came in at the full price offer and then he called me and said, we have, 
I don't know if this is true or not, but you know, he, he pulled the, I have exactly the same offer. Um, can you make your offer a little, you know, we're basically going to highest and best. We just need stronger offers and we're going to decide. So, um, so in the initial in, conversation, did you ask him how, if he had an offer? At the, yeah, at the time that we spoke, there were no offers, were but no he offers. said there was a lot of interest in the property. And then, yeah. yeah, we put that in the next day or, and, you know, within the following day, it was, they received another offer. Um, yeah. Did you ask when you, when they said you got another offer, did you ask them how much? I didn't. Cause I, I don't think, I, I don't think we're, I didn't know if we were allowed to. <laughs> you can ask the, 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 can. the agent's not supposed to tell you unless the seller allows him to him or her to tell you, but okay. you'd be amazed how many agents just kind of spill it. Or they'll okay, take the price good. that they want you to come in at one or the other. Um, yeah. It doesn't hurt to ask. As I say, it doesn't hurt to ask. You can always say no. Um, okay. how, when you, you said they had 10 offers. So when you made, you made the initial call, what did they say? And, and what, did you ask them how much they had? What they, what, they, what, they, what they say? And he wouldn't say. So finally, he wouldn't tell you the price. Going around with uh, percentages. Is it this much over percent? Is it that much That's over? Good. That's good. a good idea. Did he tell you it was overpriced? Yes. Yeah, he tell you he, he had overpriced. He said at least five percent overpriced. He did. Okay, good. So there you go. That gave me an idea. That gave me an idea. And then, and then Perfect. I was like, any conventional FHA? Let me just, right. Just the more information I had. Okay, now could... now flip the situation. Another agent called you. You were the listing agent on that house. They asked you how much. Do you have any offers? If uh, so, yeah. what do you have? What do you um, tell them? And I never tell the price. You don't tell them the price. Never tell the price. What do you um, tell them? Just Say please submit the offer. Yeah, gotcha. And then Michelle, if you were in the same because you had that you had 10 offers, a little weird, different. When you first had called, they didn't have any offers. And the next day they had one offer, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was a little fishy, but I mean I so guess flip, so flip point. the situation around and what, what did you end up going 10 over? Yeah. Gotcha. What would you have said to the agent when he called you and asked you if you had any offers? If so, how much? Um I probably wouldn't give the price unless my seller wanted me to. Right. And I just kind of say, you know, bring your strongest offer in um, right. and kind of go. I, I never had a listing, so it's hard for me to really put in perspective. But I'm just, I'm think, just, I, there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, listen, yeah. if the seller doesn't give you permission to, to let the other agent know what you offer you have, like a, a strategic to get the other people up, then no, you can't give the price out. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is a no-no. But we also threw in a bunch of clauses in that contract to make the buyer we feel did better. make the buyer feel better. Correct. What on the oh this contract? Yes. Oh, gotcha. We have all kinds of clauses to make the buyer feel better. To make yeah. them feel com comfortable, like with what the going over construct or uh, I mean uh, inspections over and stuff. The appraisal. That's what oh, the appraisal. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, gotcha. That's right. I just paid seven thousand. So let me ask you, no, you, right, so I kind of got to roll into negotiating with agents now, because I, I, that's my favorite part, um, and, and sellers, but this, this market is tough. It's, you know, you have 10 offers, two offers, three offers, and it's, if it was 2019, I would say 50% of them are, are bluffing. <laughs> We're just trying to BS you to get you up, but right now they're probably not. So you, you just have to come in with the best foot forward. And if the buyer's motivation isn't at eight, nine or 10, then they're probably not going to get it. Um, but uh, you saw buyers skipping, skipping inspections. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you have buyers waving, yeah, waving home inspections, like first time buyers, right. um, or for informational purposes only with no right to cancel the contract. I mean, that's just getting crazy. Uh, no, I that's getting crazy. I yeah. Do, um, they were doing it. Were, as is, but I did say it was termite or structural. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's a pretty yeah. Pretty but that it was. Do hmm? it? Huh? Yeah. yeah, if yeah. the buyer agrees, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that next. yeah, we'll talk about it next. Actually, negotiating contract terms. Yeah, so like real quick, uh, was, is there is there do you have it in there negotiating with agents or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I'm going to do that and then we'll go into that next. So we'll we'll do the. Do we do home inspections first? Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, no, let me finish this conversation. I'm, uh, okay. Whatever you can go, you can go into the thing. Yeah, I mean, because it's kind of like detail of that. No, so if you're negotiating, if you're the listing agent on the property. You're you don't have the you know the buyer. Um, first of all, does everybody understand if you have both the buyer and the seller, you're dual agent, right? Yes. Um, and therefore, it's, the best way to describe that to either client is you're a mediator of numbers. You're you're just putting pushing numbers back and forth. You know, it's a three hundred thousand dollar asking price. 
she makes an offer of 250 the seller comes back at 295 i'm just bringing numbers back and forth There's, you cannot give any any information at all not even the hint of information nothing 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 um, there's some states that don't even allow you to be a dual agent so just you know as jan this agent when i first got started she was like she put an offer in my listing she's sean with the agents here this is risky this is risky territory just told me and i was like i was all nervous like oh my god but just remember you both represent both clients so you're just passing information back and forth when you have another agent making an offer on your listing i you know i'm there to make the seller the most money you know or or get them the best terms right you're there to get them the best terms and the best price right say yes good I want, I want to there real quick. yeah please good. our new agents if you sell a colorway listing with full glory mm -hmm. yes any color that land is short mm -hmm. us we're a team or um literally Lake harbor so what do you mean by that you said so if you if you're selling if you have a buyer and you're selling a listing that's listed with any realtor on one of the 300 realtors we have in Brigantine, Little Lake Harbor, and Northfield, you're still a dual agent, even though you don't know the seller, but the other realtor is in this office. So the understanding from the perspective that a broker of record, who's Rosalie, technically owns all the listings in this in Calgary's Old Atlantic Shore in New Jersey. That's the way the law works. Gotcha. Um, so if you view it from that point, that is how the law views it. So you representing technically a seller you don't know. Um, so yeah, just just in layman's terms. Yeah, it's it, it is because a lot of people don't know that, and they check the box on the front of the contract that says I represent the buyer, but technically it needs to be you represent both buyer and seller, even though you'll never talk to the seller because it's not really your client. So and you said Brigantine, Ocean City, Brigantine, Little Lake Harbor, and here Northfield. Oh, oh, yeah, Atlantic Shore, Brigantine. one of our in our organization. Yeah, Ocean City is another um, broker uh, and owner. Oh well, yes, they said low. hello. I'm Oh yeah, why they called you? Yeah. What they call you and say? They want to hire me. You seriously? When did that happen? Um, no. No, it was like automated a company. Week. No, I spoke to what's his name? Um, Ed. Another guy. Is it John? Yeah, it was a John. Yeah. Yes, it was John. He John, asking. what? Cumberland County's team leader that went to. Quentin's team, probably. Oh, he's yeah. with Quentin's team. John Missouri. And now he's partners. Ed keeps posting pictures with him. So I don't know if he's assistant team leader for Ed or I don't know what, what's happening. And who his else is he, who else did he call? I don't I didn't know he called anyone. But how'd you know his name? Because I just know that John went to Ocean City and she, she said John. Yes, it was John. Yeah. He's all over Instagram too. All what do you, what is he saying? Like videos, what kind of but is he yeah, yeah I don't know if he's passed, calling she just our agents. So PSI. Oh, he's something. calling the PSI yes. list. Yeah. Oh, I thought you already had. Yeah, I forgot you're still taking a test. I'm not taking a test. Yeah, you're already. Yeah, yeah you're done. Yeah, you've been. Yeah. Where you've been for a while though? When did he call you? Uh, last week. When did you get your license? Uh, about two weeks ago. Three oh, weeks all right. After the class, I can look, but I think she's on the PSI. Yeah, list. for but September. My call has definitely been blowing up. Yep, that's what happened. Other people. Yeah. Two calling you. Yeah. 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 Really expired all right. listing. All right. Did you tell him you work here? I did. Yeah. yeah. That's why they told me to tell you hello. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Oh, you over there. Really okay. Good. Sure. I was about to get mad at John and be like, man, that knucklehead. No, no, no. I they, couldn't get him the job. Right? I gave him the reference to go to Cumberland said, County. Said, yeah. and, and Tom. All right. Good. Good. All right. Good. Mm -hmm. now, now I'm not mad anymore. I was no, about no, to no, be no, like, no. what? Hold up the class. Hold on. Let me make a phone call. <laughs> um. All right. I thought I thought they would know. I I just no, listened, she's I thought right. They would know. Oh. They get a list once a month of passing students and then. Yeah, by the time they get it, it's the first week okay. of October. Um, yeah, but when did you pass your test? No, a couple oh, months ago? Or? Yeah, like a month ago. Oh, okay. Did you get a call from John? <laughs> no, <laughs> it must be September's list he's calling. Um, all right, so back to negotiating with agents. Um, uh, so if I represent the seller and, and I, don't, you know, I don't have any offers, and 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 in spend the market short amount of time, and the agents call me and say, "Well, I have an offer." Um, I don't know if it, you know this is bad or not, but if I don't represent the buyer, it's another agent. I usually tell them I have an offer coming. There's always an offer coming. <laughs> and when they're negotiating with me, um, the, I'll tell you the best negotiating tool to me is silence, with just the word no. But I tell sellers because. A lot of sellers, they don't want to come down in price, right? So you have a seller, they want to come down in price, you make an offer, 
normal market, what are they doing? They're making an offer that's not full price. This is not a normal market, remember. Um, and in that case, in order to get your seller down, I usually tell them, if you want me to get them up on price, you got to be prepared to lose. And if you're okay losing and negotiating, then I can negotiate well for you. But if you're not, not okay losing and you want to take whatever the highest offer I can get is, then I got to, I got to give in to them. So best negotiating tactic is silence. That and the word no. Negotiating could be very few words or no words. Um, research is also very important. Yes, in what aspect? Researching the listing, researching the over listings on the same property. Oh, like the property, like how much been the market, property. the yeah. Yeah, I money the owed. Situation. I sold 1,200 copies per property in my own front of the address. I am? You were. Oh, that's right, we were. Right, occupied property that we had no access to. Yeah. Showing showings. He made an offer 75 and I'm not closing it. The idiot realtor who was representing this actual occupant bid 120. On a project, I couldn't get access to. It was representing the occupant, you said? Yeah. The occupant was trying to buy it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. They paid 120 for a house I couldn't get inside. But the occupant was inside? Yes. So he knew it was there? Correct. Gotcha. Did he buy it? He bought 120. Did he really? For, wow. For a house I listed at 99000 Wow. They were based on the market. That's the market going on right now. It was what, over. a year ago? Not even, maybe? The summer. Yeah. This, it was the summer. Okay. God damn. So, so the crazy part is, is that they didn't. And we assumed it. that place was trash. It was trash. They, they, Magic they got the cops out there. Look at the MLS before you make a judgment on what to do. Yes, yes. And if you have more information you can find, how much did they pay for it? I mean, not that that depends on what you're going to buy it for. But how much did they pay for it? What are they, the mortgage they had on it? How long has it been on the market? A lot of they times do. people will, um, I'll tell you, if, if I list a property that isn't, it's overpriced and it's not selling, I will get a price reduction in the first 30, the first 60 to 90 days at least. And then I will relist the property as a new listing, but at a new price. And I'll change some pictures around. This will make it just come up fresh in people's emails. If they have a search saved on Zillow, Rotor.com, it will give that initial email to go out. You'd be amazed how many realtors think it's a brand new listing and has not been on the market before. And again, this is really just to get the seller more money. It'd be You'll be shocked the percentage of list price I get so much higher by just re relisting it once because it's been on the market too long at too high of a price than just reducing, reducing, reducing. Because reducing it over a six month time period makes it look desperate, right? So, something to keep in mind. Um, think now, when you're negotiating the price, like she was, we're going into like home inspections and other aspects of the contract, it's all one package, right? So, like, Closing date matters, down payment matters, cash or mortgage matters, the price obviously matters. How long to closing? Are you at, you going to ask for every single inspection item? The max I have to do as a seller? These are all things that come into uh, negotiating. Right now, which is like Holly said, 21000 over asking price, as is home inspection during the attorney review period, which is, I don't know how you got somebody out there that quick. Um, we, you know we what I mean? didn't even have the contract signed. Right. Because You're not even legally under contract yet. He did a home inspection, so this way they can just cancel during the attorney review. Oh, no. <laughs> did they ask for any repairs? No, no, because it was going to be as is anyway. It was a decent home, and I kind of mortgage. Um, mortgage. They have a conventional. How much and down? They asked, um, and they said they were willing to do five thousand over the appraised because it didn't. Appraise the buyer. Mm -hmm. So the buyer will put additional five thousand dollars out of pocket for a short appraisal. But I have, a, I have a question about that. So there's really no negotiating. That's the problem in this kind of market. It's basically it's give as much as you can until. You if get the property. Sign a close, the seller can't cancel during return review. No, because at that point in time, I don't think they can do unless they do an attorney drawn contract. What do they? No, they, they can. If, but the seller can cancel during return review. The seller can. Right. So. Oh if, yeah. If you're going to do it that way, you have to. If the seller can't cancel it, what if they get a higher bid? Then, then you have to have special. You're right. You're asked out. Well, well, in New York, that's the way it is. In New York, I just I referred a guy up, to, uh, my good client. He's got his mom passed away, or aunt, somebody. She left him a house, and I'm talking. He said, "Now he buys properties down here." He said, "Sean, this agent, my listing agent, is telling me that the buyer is doing an inspection. They want to know what I would up to what dollar amount I would fix anything in the house to to give him a max and appraisal. If it under appraised, would the seller come down?" Or, and, and they're going to get from the buyer how much they would pay over the appraised value before they even got a number for an offer or a contract. 
And the agent, I called the agent, I called her, I just talked to her broker because I thought she was crazy. And she said, it's about 10 minutes outside the city. And she said, this is the way we do it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that sounds crazy, but our market was getting like that. Like, you know, the, when you get into markets that are consistently good, like uh, uh, Wilmington, Delaware, they have a 3%, 4% unemployment at max at any given time. So their economy and their markets, are, real estate market is just on fire. Manhattan, normally their, their market is always on fire. So you tend to get different practices when that happens. Um, so yeah, but that is a risk. She could have done the home inspection. He could have canceled or taken a higher offer and then so the buyer's asked out on this inspection. Um, so really like right now when you're negotiating as, an, as a buyer's agent, there's not much leverage unless the agent literally tells you, I have no offers, I have no activity and the seller's desperate. Then you can, you know, then you can make you know, a little lower offer, make the terms a little better for your buyer. I tell um, all the time on my listings right now. Right. What's that? I tell that all the time on my listings right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm desperate. I have no offers. The sellers, right, exactly. It's occupied. But when you're, when you're a listing you agent, house, I mean, occupied. you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. I'm usually fairly honest. But I tell them, I always tell them we have an offer. It's supposed to be getting. Yes. Oh, I know. I um, offer and if they, they make a lower offer and I know we can get more or the seller wants more, then, then that, that becomes, that. there's the negotiating you're starting because you can't bluff forever. So if you don't have any other offers, you got to figure out a way to get those buyers up. And a lot of times you can have the same conversation about motivation with their agent, you know, through their agent. You know what I mean? Like they're not coming up. Your seller's not coming down. Why is the buyer buying? You almost have that feeling conversation with the agent. And by the time you're done a 10 minute conversation about the motivation of the buyer, they'll eventually call the buyer and kind of have that same conversation with them. Um, but if the buyer's motivation is high, They'll come up. If you can't get them up just by going back and forth and negotiating numbers, just stop calling them for a day. You guys keep um, speaking about the motivation behind the market, like saying that, that the, person. the market is right now. So, like, can you give just a little more about? Yeah, what sure. The the, well, when I say motivation, so it's about it's the motivation it. of the person. Right. So, but it's how y'all you. Y'all keep talking, y'all, I keep hearing you guys speak about the market. So it's two different things. So we've got the motivation of the person. Why are they buying and why are they selling? Because if they're selling or buying, their motivation really should be like a seven. If you ask them, it's got a one to 10, how motivated are you to do this? Or it should be a seven, eight or nine at least. Um, but the market, the real estate market right now in Atlantic County and pretty much nationwide is up anywhere from 25 to 40%. It went up that much in 18 months. And it went up that much, 90% due to COVID. Um, a small percentage, I'm going to say maybe maybe 20% of the reason it went up that quickly is the interest rates went down to a dramatically low interest rate. Um, but it was the perfect storm to create a, a, an increase in the market where COVID happens, you have shutdowns, which then create people to take their house off the market because they're afraid to let people in their house. Mm -hmm. It also gives a moratorium for tenants to not get evicted, which if they're not, they're not paying rent, they're not showing the house. Um, and then if they're not evicting anybody, they're not evicting on foreclosures either. So it was a foreclosure moratorium as well, which caused no foreclosures to come to the market. Specifically in our area, 25% of our, our listings on the MLS were, were foreclosures for a while there. So it literally went from like 200, 300 foreclosures a year to like, yeah, I'm sorry, a month, 200, 300 foreclosures listed a month in RMLS to like five, right? I mean, literally, dude, they were just gone overnight. So if you take that much inventory, we always said, if we took all the foreclosures off the market, we'd have a rubber band effect up. Well, that's what it did. But then add in the eviction moratorium, you know, add in sellers not showing their house because of COVID. You had a, you had a cartoon rubber band. Right, exactly. Yeah. Literally a cartoon rubber band. So you had 30% of the inventory is gone overnight. And then 2% interest rates come out to drive demand. And then you have the, the other aspect of people could work remotely. So you have people making $300,000, $400,000 in Manhattan, buying a house here for like, you know, you could buy it on a $60,000 salary. It was, it was a dynamic that nobody's ever seen before, really. The household, household income, your average household income dictates your average sales price. Barring the, you know, taking out the Barrier Island. Barrier Island really is based on wherever they're buying from. So it's a mix of prices. But in the Atlantic County mainland, 
before, 20, before COVID 2019, the average household income was 67,000. With the car payment, a credit card, it, it estimated the average sales price of about 160,000, 165. Our average sales price in the mainland is like 210 or something right now, 220. So we've priced, you know, 65% of our buyers in workers, people that live in the mainland in Atlantic County out of the market. They can't buy them unless they're selling their house for a lot of money and they're putting a lot of money down on an overpriced house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why it has to come down. So right now houses are overpriced. Yes. To be clear. Okay. Yes. On the mainland of Atlantic County, they are. Unless our average household income went up to 85,000, 90,000, which it 100% did not, it probably went down. We're way overpriced. Wow. Way overpriced. Way overpriced. Yeah. And not, you know, everybody keeps telling me I don't they don't think it's gonna come down to what it was. I if unless I'm completely wrong, I think the prices are coming down and they're gonna come down just as fast as they did when they, they as they went up. You know, the prices like went up that much in 18 months. The prices went up 40% in six years in 2000 to 2006. It took six years to go 40%. This happened in 18 months. Mm -hmm. It's like unprecedented so i think a big spec the market is the average condition home yeah the blue condition home going for a rehab they should stay pretty high price right now there's no gap mm -hmm. before there used to be a good solid oh gap there's a gap between, between like yeah the condition the average condition home right but now there's zero gap it mm -hmm. doesn't matter you're just getting into a home yeah the average condition home is going to really take a beating because there's nothing else to buy right you know what i mean there it was literally yeah we had a lot of peels to you. I sure am. We say no or old? No. Oh, they say you old? I was like, I just told him old. Yeah, no, no, no. No. He said no. He said no. He's messing with me. Messing with me. Yeah. So the good thing is, we built this company in the down market. We started in 07, and it actually, it's because we will show you what to do. The question is whether you actually do it. Where other people are just gonna, they'll just take a break and the market goes down, which is good because less real, realtors get out of real estate. So the amount of licensed realtors goes down to a much smaller pool. So that there's more properties to sell for the agents that last. And this is a very, very simple, stupid business. Don't overcomplicate it and you'll make a lot of money. Thanks. You'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. You got this. Um, so negotiating terms. So you got your price. Again, it's always motivation with agents. You know, like don't don't give up too much information. Keep them kind of like you know, kind of like a uh, you know, kind of like a boyfriend or you know, girlfriend. The the, the the boyfriend calls you too much. You don't want kind of want them, right? The girlfriend, you know. But if they don't call you that much, you kind of want them like that. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so like when the agent you calls said, you. Give don't give too much information to who to the, an agent that's making an offer on your listing oh okay <laughs> so like give, give them a little information to get them wanting to make the offer but once they make the offer if it's not something your seller is going to accept whether you know it or you've already talked to your seller so a lot of times i'll tell people if you use all the scripts you can use and you, you feel like you're going to talk to them too much at that point give them a break just don't call them don't call him or her back now sometimes i'll let them sit for a day some of the best negotiating I've done is literally no negotiating. And a lot of times it was because I'm busy lately. I just won't call them back. And the next day, Olga or somebody will be like, hey, they came back with that price you, you wanted. And I'll be like, oh, that's awesome. I didn't even say anything. My point is, if you start talking to people too much, you're, you're going back and forth, it's harder to get them to come up. And if you've had the conversation with their, you know, about their client and motivation, you know, why, why is your client buying in the first place? Um, there's a lot of things. Remember, you're kind of you're kind of in it with the agent. You're trying to get the buyer to come up and trying to get the seller to come down. And a lot of times, that's over a five thousand or ten thousand dollar gap. Um, yeah. So you either work together to get it up, or eventually, I, sometimes I'll just say like, "Listen, uh, I'll call to one more time, see what I can do, and I'll call you back." And then I just won't call back for a day. And I'll see if he's he or she's able to get them up to ten thousand or five thousand. Always the last couple thousand is the hardest one. Get them up like fifty grand, or the seller down fifty grand. It's like another thousand. I'm like, no, not do it. Done. So, I was making a joke about girlfriend and boyfriend. Right? The boyfriend no, calls you too it's, much. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know what I mean? It, right. Everybody wants what they can't have. Clear. Yeah. Right. right? That's 
So if I stop calling the agent for a while or I say, well, I got another buyer, give me an offer. Let me negotiate with them and see what I can do. And then they'll be like, what? well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I could get them up another 5,000. Oh, okay. We well, told me you couldn't yesterday. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the terms are just as important. So like if I have a seller that has to get to wherever, Florida, we say by December and I'm getting the contract, let's say now, um, it should be plenty of time to close it. But I have two buyers, one's given... 10,000 over asking and one's giving at asking, but at asking can get us closed by the middle of November, but the 10,000 over wants till the end of December. That's too risky because there's a chance I might not get the seller to, to Florida until January, right? So terms do make a difference if you know what the seller wants, if you're on the other end. Um, right so now, so like the closing a, date a big difference they do. At right now, if you're making an offer as a buyer's agent and, and you're the listing agent, in, if, unless you've got some unique house that nobody wants, you're basically negotiating usually that the home inspection is for informational purposes only. Like if you call up the agent and they say, we have multiple offers, especially 10 offers or something like that, chances are one of them is over asking if they didn't already tell you that. And one of them has the home inspection and inspections usually as informational purposes only. That means that the buyer can do an inspection, but they're just doing it so they know what's wrong. They're not asking for any repairs and they can't cancel. Now you can, I always leave a way to cancel. So, um, but yeah, the, what you mean they can't cancel? That's what the sellers are wanting. So if they have 10 offers, they're looking for somebody to buy it 100% as is. When they say 100% as is, that means basically, unless you don't get the mortgage or you can't get a CO from the city, there's no way out of the contract or you lose so your deposit. For you. I'm not saying it's the best thing for the buyer, but that's just what reality is right nowadays. When you put in there for, for informational purposes only, mm -hmm. you cross out that actual clause that right. says you can't cancel the contract. It's still You can. You can't oh, no, you're right. Contract. Yeah, well, that used to be my trick, yeah. I used to write as is in all my contracts for invest, as is, as is. Well, the contract's already as is. It's printed in the home inspection section. Unless you literally redline out the termite, home inspection, CO, uh, maintenance of property, the condition of property, where it says it has to be broom swept, unless you literally cross all that out, he's right, you can cancel, but the smart listing agents know that writing it in the provisions doesn't mean, you know, right, doesn't really mean it, you know what I mean? Right. Um, a lot of it, we'll know that as a, a buyer's agent too, because buyers have literally lost bids where they actually had an over asking price that would have won the bid. They said it was going to be as is, but didn't redline out the contract. So smart listing agents will know, well, they still have all these rights to do all the inspections, all the rights to cancel, all the rights to ask. Um, they think, you know, I've heard listing agents say, well, I thought your agent didn't, you know, didn't know what they were doing or they were trying to pull a fast one on me until you made it in there. I got eight more offers. I'm going with theirs. You know what I mean? So depending on I don't think it's a smart move for buyers, especially first time home buyers to take out the right to cancel an inspection. But that is that is the reality in some of these points, like Holly's. Hard money is not cash. Hard money is not cash. You guys know what hard money is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, all right, good. Um, you guys know what hard money is? Do you have any questions on hard money real quick? No? Oh, um, it's very heavy money. No, um, it's uh, basically private funding. It's some. It could oh, be yeah. anywhere, I like a rich guy. Okay. Yeah, it could be a rich attorney that you know giving yeah. you money. Right now, there's actually institutional, you know, they call them private lenders, institutional hard money lenders, which are hard money lenders. they're not as they're not as stringent on documentation they need from buyers as they are on a normal mortgage. Interest rates are higher, terms are shorter, expenses are more money. They're not regulated by the feds, so they can charge whatever they want, really. The rates could be anywhere from 8% to 15%. Usually meant for like a short-term investment, something like that, not, not to buy a home and live in it. Um, again, home inspection terms, my buyers, I like to have a way out of the contract. Uh, normal market, not this market. You would not touch the home inspection. It would be normally 14 days. Termite would be usually, I think it's like 20, 14 or 21 days. Um, CEO is usually on the seller, the certificate of occupancy. In this, in this county state, you have to get a certificate of occupancy with every sale. It might be just a minimum fire cert or a full CO. Normally that is on the seller of the property. 
unless it's a bank owned as is, then it's on the buyer. But mo I mean, a lot of these sales, I don't know, do you have to get the CEO or is the seller getting the CEO, Howie? Um, we're making them still get the CEO. They're the CEO? Who is it? Uh, he said it's on the seller unless it's bank owned. Unless it's an as is sale, usually she jumped off. Usually it's, it, you, before the pandemic, 2019 and before that, it was if the property was as is, like it was dilapidated, it was a problem with it, you couldn't get a mortgage on it, the seller got the CO. For bank owned properties that were in that condition, the banks made the buyer get the CO. But many times, like everything else in this market, the seller is asking the buyer to get the CO. So I'm trying to give you two, two kind of scenarios. If you it was before the pandemic, the, you would home inspection would be 14 days. You'd have the same time period to get a termite inspection, well test, septic test. The well would be on the seller. Septic was test would be on the buyer. But typically, that's, for, that's the safer bet for the buyer. Um, and then the CEO would be on the seller. 2021, um, during the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> all of that might be on the buyer. Uh, and you might be putting it in the contract that way just to be competitive with your offer. Also, if you want to make sure your buyer gets a home inspection right away, because they're going to pay for home inspection $400. And they got to pay for an appraisal $400. Mm -hmm. If you wait two weeks, that money's gone. Mm -hmm. If you get it done right away, you can actually resolve an issue before they pay for the appraisal. <coughs> gotcha. What do you mean? Would you say the buyer might spend it? You mean? Well, it's going to be out of their pocket, but if you get the inspection done right away, right. there's an issue they don't spend the money for the appraisal. Right. No, you're, oh yeah, do one after the other. Do the home appraisal right, right away, so you don't wait 14 days. Okay. So you're not doing both at the same time first, either. Yeah. Appraisal second. Like, you just want to get it done right away. You don't want to wait 14 days. Yeah, it would be nice if you could get it like the second day or third day out of attorney review. The sooner the better. Sweet. And then once that's back and it's something the buyer is least comfortable with, they're not like running away for the hills um then have the mortgage company order the appraisal because the appraisals have been taken two weeks to begin nowadays because they're busy and he's right you don't want to waste that money on the appraisal if they're going to run away right. with their own inspection exactly right and then if it's a property they're doing a well test or a septic test they're, they're spending more money so kind of we try to do it in steps um to to try to save them as much money so what you said, I'm um, just going back one, mm -hmm. where you said that if, um, if these things that are normally, you know, they go, uh, one normally goes to the seller, one normally goes to the buyer, but in 2021, more fall on the buyer. Yes. If these things are more fall on the buyer in the negotiations for the price, we can include that for the reasons why we want to come in with the asking price that we're asking for is what you're saying. You could try, yes. That's the way to go you could try. It. Like we, what you're costs. saying is you're saying you can make a higher offer, but ask the seller to do a lot of the inspections. Or yeah, or I'll you know I'll come up closer to your asking. Right. If I'm taking care of all of these, but if if you know. If I'm not. Yeah, like so. If I'm not doing it. Um, if you the buyer is not doing a lot of these inspections themselves. That right. Normally then I'll do. come right. If come the buyer's higher. not gotcha. doing, then I'll come up higher. You can, but if you I have try to that. do it all, right? You know, I want to meet right here. Right. That's a good negotiation. Is what I'm normally, asking. I'd say yes. Okay. Normally, I'd say yes. In this market, she like I don't know if you heard, she went twenty one thousand dollars over yeah. asking, and they, they hey. sellers are probably doing anything. Are they going to do the termite damage? If there's termite, um, they didn't do it. Mike, they kept it. Fine. Gotcha. Okay. Is it in there for the seller to do up to X? Um, yeah. Like one percent. It was okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Um, but no home inspection repaired. That was as is. That was the as is. Gotcha. Hey, CO inspection. Anything? So the CO inspection if it has repairs, the sellers are doing it. The sellers are doing the CO. But they're doing repairs. Oh, they did. They really, they really, I know. Okay. Right. Really good. Gotcha. These are all things that people will put limits on, and you'll know. They'll say, well, we're only doing X amount for CO, we're only doing X amount for termite, or they'll say, we're not doing nothing for nothing. And you'll know that when you make the offer. And that's how you're right. If, if they say, we're not, you made an offer to the seller taking care of the well, let's say, and taking care of the CO and paying up to 1500 hours on the uh, on the termite, any termite damage or treatment. And uh, the home inspection is not like as is where the seller crossed it out and I'm not doing anything. And they come back and say, yeah, we'll accept your offer, but we're not doing any of this. You're buying it to decide, am I going to lower my price or am I going to leave it that way and take care of everything? Mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? Sure. And I say sure. night right now, that might be the reality. They might be taking care of everything and getting no repairs and paying higher. Mm -hmm. That is not normal though. You know what I mean? Your yeah. buyers always take the home inspection. So that's so we'll hopefully it won't it. last more than six months. I'm just saying, like a lot of them that have been under contract were as is, but then they do the home inspection. And just because it's as is, you know it's not really as is, but there's a lot wrong. Right. And Unless there's they no cross it out. Unless mm -hmm. they cross out the home inspection clause. Right. right. And they don't usually. They don't and, usually, right. And I know my seller was. I forget, he was asking 250. This is a lot of confusing. It's a lot to remember. Long, so so you have questions, Paul. Five, take 5,000 off. He didn't want to do anything. Okay, great. Same with the house they're buying at 350, was supposed to be as is. And there right. was a lot wrong. And now they renegotiated and they took 7,000 off. So that's the only other way, even though it's as is. I haven't right. seen many that are really as is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, I gotta go either or forget how bad it has to Oh, they always say the last thing I'll say is I apologize. I, I gotta go because my I gotta get my kid. Shit. Sorry. Um, I was supposed to say the two is when you're when normal market and you're negotiating actual home inspection repairs for a buyer. That is normal. You do a home inspection and you give a list of stuff. You say the buyer is requesting the seller do X. One, they're not supposed to be, they're not cosmetic repairs, they're supposed to be electrical, plumbing, foundation, roof, something serious, not a chip in the wall. Um Ask for more, and you'll probably get less. Makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ask if there's 32 items that this the, the on the home inspection uh, summary, you know, and you want to ask, ask for 32 or ask for 30. But if the buyer says, "Listen, 20 of these, I, you know, I I got to get fixed. I'm not moving in. I'm not buying the house with 20 of these repairs. Ask for 30, you'll probably get the 20. You know what I mean? Ask for more, you might get a little less. Follow? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the good thing, the good thing, and, and the and the confusing thing about real estate is nothing's ever the same. So it's very good because you always have something new. Twenty one years, and I've run into stuff that I still find new <laughs> that I never heard of. Um, I apologize to cut Thank short so and run. Much. I kind of I hit everything, but uh, let's leave it too. I got to pick up my son Thank in you. five minutes. That was really good. No, Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Chef. Thank, Thank you, ladies.